increases to Social Security in the form of tax-free benefits. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below as take a look at this article that just came out. New bill makes residents of this state exempt from Social Security taxes. What are the conditions? Now, as you know, you receive these benefits, you got to pay federal taxes on them. You also have to pay state taxes on them. However, we're hearing that they want to wipe that out for one particular state. This is being approved, and it's going to be implemented starting January of 2024. Now, take a look. There are currently 11 states that were doing this in 2022, and those states are Colorado, Connecticut, Kansas, Minnesota, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, New Mexico, Rhode Island, Utah, and Vermont. All the other states, including Washington, D.C., they do not tax your payments from the state, but you do have the federal taxes. Now, take a look here. This is the state. Missouri legislature passes bill that eliminates state tax on Social Security. So congratulations to those of you in the state of Missouri. Now, let me know your thoughts. Should they do this for all the states? And what about the federal taxation? Now, as you guys know, you pay into Social Security your entire life, and then you go to withdraw. But what we're hearing is that you withdraw and you got to pay taxes on it again when you're a recipient or a beneficiary. Now, we're going to be covering these in detail for you as we're going to discuss the brackets on a federal level. Do you think they should change that? Let me know what you think. One of the things is that this is from the Social Security Administration's official site. They have the brackets and the breakdown, but it has not changed in quite some time. And every year, what increases? The cost of living adjustment or the COLA to keep up with inflation. And last year, we saw an 8.7% increase. And that is a 40-year high for SSI, SSDI, retirement, all benefits across the board from the Social Security Administration. And what they're saying is people are receiving more benefits, but the tax brackets are staying the same, which means that some people, they're having to pay more than half of those benefits back unexpectedly. And people thought that they were getting a boost in their benefits. Come to find out they're also getting a massive boost in their taxes man let me know your thoughts in the comments down below now i'm going to be covering the brackets the details all the information and also be sure to stick around to the end as i'm going to give you some updates on social security increases and what's going on in congress right now as 2023 they're saying is the year of social security reform we've got to do something because there is not a whole lot of time and there's literally tens of millions of people all over our country depending on these benefits so I'm going to get you caught up on the latest, but before we do, do me a quick favor. Smash the like button if you appreciate the updates. Just takes a second. Thank you so much. And if you want to stay up to date, it's totally free. Why not? All you got to do is hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. But with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so we're going to be taking a look at federal taxes here in just a second on our Social Security. But first... Let's take a look at Missouri and the bill that just passed. And again, let me know your thoughts. Should they wipe out taxes for recipients in all states? Or what about on a federal level? Among the 31 bills signed into law by Missouri Governor Mike Parson on July 6th was Senate Bill 190, which decrees that the state will no longer tax Social Security and public pension payments for the tax year beginning January of 2024. So this is coming up for next year. Currently, Missouri residents only pay taxes on Social Security if they make more than $85,000 a year or more than $100,000 a year as a married couple. Lawmakers extended this tax break to all seniors by approving SB 190, and Missouri is one of the 11 states that tax Social Security benefits. Now, the bill also includes provisions making the state seniors exempt from rate hikes on property taxes, with the counties now responsible for granting property tax credits for seniors. However, the pause on property tax rates would only apply to primary residents or people aged 65 and older, according to the Associated Press. Now, SB 190's passing comes as many Missourians are seeing severe increases in 2023 property value assessments, which form the basis of property tax rates. Assessment hikes resulting from the state's real estate market boom has led homeowners to seek opportunities to lower their property tax bill through the appeals process. Although it passed through the Republican-led House 154 to 2 representatives from both parties expressed apprehension about the bill, with most naysayers blaming the governor's broad fiscal policies for the substantial decrease in state revenues moving forward. Closing out all remaining bills from the 2023 session, Parson cited the tax cut as a necessary piece of legislation and a reason that he vetoed 201 line items that he asked from the state budget for the upcoming year, according to the Missouri Independent. The bill is expected to reduce state revenues by over $300 million 
annually. Now, a number of Democrats, including Representative Peter Meredith, seemed to regard the final bill as an inevitable compromise. I was not thrilled with it, Meredith said, but honestly, to me, it was the best of the options that were presented. Many of us agree that there is a real problem with seniors right now that are on fixed incomes dealing with inflation and property taxes. This is a big part of that. It helps some of our seniors who need that help, and it helps all of the rest of them who don't need this at all, said Lavender, according to the Associated Press. We don't have anything in place to replenish that revenue that we're going to be cutting out of our income levels for us to be able to have the ability to spend in the future. So they're saying this is going to be helping our seniors. However, uh, this is not going to be helping out the state's revenue. So there you have it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What's more important, cutting the taxation on this so that way recipients can receive more of their benefits or is it important for us to receive that so that way we can have more revenue for the state? Well, what about on a federal level? Take a look at this. This is from the Social Security Administration, and this is the taxation brackets that we currently have. And we have not seen these increase in quite some time, which we heard last year pushed a lot of people into new brackets, and they need to pay substantially larger amounts on their benefits. Now, take a look at this. This is directly from the website. I'll link this in the description below. File a federal tax return as an individual. Here are your brackets. Between 25000 to 34000 you may pay income tax of up to 50% on your benefits. Now, anything that you make under 25000 you are not taxed. But anything over 34000 up to 85% of your benefits may be taxable. And a lot of people are saying, we need to change this as well. Why have we not bumped these up to keep up with inflation? As a lot of people are making more than this, and now they're paying a whole lot more on their taxes. And if you file joint returns with a spouse... Well, these are your brackets. Between thirty-two to forty-four thousand, you may pay up to fifty percent on your benefits. Anything over forty-four thousand, you got to pay up to eighty-five percent. But again, anything less than thirty-two thousand, if you're a married couple filing jointly, you don't pay taxes for Social Security benefits. Now, again, twenty twenty-three is supposed to be the year of Social Security reform, and this is one of the issues that need to be addressed: taxation for recipients. In addition to that taxation for wage earners and also increasing the benefits overall. We heard that across the board recipients would receive bump ups and we're waiting to see which one of the bills that have currently been proposed in Congress will start to get traction and move forward and fulfill the promises by the Biden administration and by Congress to reform Social Security. Now one of the ones that has gotten a lot of traction is the Social Security 2100 Act that has baseline increases of $485 per month. Now, to get the latest on that one, check out this video right here. However, it does not necessarily solve the solvency issue, which is uh, going to be hitting pretty soon, maybe about 8 to 12 years, maybe 10 years or so, we're hearing there will not be enough to pay out full benefits. So check out this video right here, and I will keep you up to date on more benefit changes to Social Security. But thanks so much for joining me, you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. God bless. This is Steve.